So just get relatively comfortable now. If closing your eyes doesn't feel safe or comfortable or causes dizziness, you can certainly keep the eyes half open, looking at the a bridge of your nose instead. Palms face up or down in your lap or on your thighs. And let's take three deep breaths in through the nose to the belly and ribs and out through the nose. This next round of a couple breaths through the nose. Maybe you can sense the cooling sensation coming in through the nose and a little bit of the warming sensation as the breath exits the nose. So just start to fine tune your attention from your external world a little bit more to the internal world. As we start to fine tune our inner awareness, just check in with how you're feeling today. This is not how you, how you think you should feel. Okay, move into a body connection. So we ask ourselves, how am I feeling today? This is more of maybe how this moment is expressing itself in the physical body, emotional, and uh, maybe a spiritual connection as well. And we can just do an honest, gentle check-in with ourselves for the next two breaths. And the state of your being doesn't have to be anything in particular. It doesn't have to be what we may deem good or bad or neutral. It just is what it is in this moment. Let's bring our hands to heart center. Eyes could remain closed. We're going to rub our hands together quite strongly, quite quickly. This is quite invigorating for the arms and the shoulders, and therefore also the digestion. Get a little heat, a little vibration, and then place your hands over your eyes. And you can blink open your eyes in the darkness and peacefulness of the palms. Taking a full breath in and out. And on the exhale, we can relieve the hands from the eyes and all come in together. Lovely. So as we go through this series together, um, each week, you know, you don't have to be there the previous week to in enjoy the next week and so on. Um, this is completely by your own schedule. And if something changes, just email me. You know, maybe you can make a class or, or you can't make one anymore. You know, just you can totally check in with me at any time. Uh, I strongly encourage questions. Questions are um, they really unlock. <laughs> so sometimes they're like the key to the wisdom, you know, the questions. And often if you're thinking about something, very likely someone else is too. Um, and maybe they're just feeling a little shy about, about asking it. There's three ways of asking questions. You can ask them ahead of time uh, through email. And you can tell me if you want them to be anonymous or not. You can ask them through the chat box in your Zoom. Uh, both in a way that says everyone, which means everyone sees your question, or you can actually message it personally to me and then I know you wish to be anonymous and I can just answer the question in general. One of the reasons why I, I restarted this class uh, was because I actually had a little bit of an inspiration. It was really lovely seeing everyone before. I did this in uh, November and December to help those who are in the meditation course uh, practice a little bit more, as well as those who have been in previous courses, you know, re-engage as well. Um, but in this intention for this particular series is really I was seeing when I was talking to students, I also do uh, some therapy groups where um, I don't know if anyone's heard of M MKP, which is the Mankind Project. That's kind of like for men who do uh, their own inner work or shadow work in a group and it's free. And then there's the women within. Um, and I was doing some work with them. And what was really fascinating is what I saw is that during this time where, you know, we're all experiencing very different ways of needing to live and different freedoms or lack of freedoms is that across the board, even though some of the stories may be slightly different uh, or some of the 
circumstances around the stories uh, to bring them to how they were feeling with maybe even a little bit different. Everyone had very similar underlying experiences. And I thought, you know, wow, this is really, it's powerful, not because you're like, great, everyone else is suffering the same way as I am. <laughs> but in a way, it's because we see the common humanity, you know, and because especially in Canada, if you're in Canada right now, you're very isolated, especially in Ontario, um, you know, can't, you're in lockdown, right? So again, we're, we're continuing to not be able to see friends and families and just, even strangers, right? To, or potentially meeting new friends. And that creates a very specific kind of response, um, kind of like globally, you know? And what's interesting is like with our egos, uh, which is the center of our, our personality and, and often the center of our, our desires and our suffering, is that it wants you to think you're alone in this, that it's only you suffering. Everyone else is doing better or, you know, um, managing better or doing better or not affected or whatever the story might be that the ego comes up with. And this creates even more amount of suffering and it creates a, a level of loneliness. And this is the main topic out of some of these subtopics we're going to talk about is loneliness. And this is, this is a big one that came up in conversations with students and just what I've been um, seeing in the world as well is that there's this general sense of loneliness. Even if you have partners, you know, or you with a family or if you have, or if you have kids, there's, there's, a, there's this piece that feels like empty um, or, or disconnected or alone. Is this anyone resonate with that? And I know that's a big question to ask because there's a level of vulnerability in responding to that. And if you're very comfortable in your seat, it's okay if you don't want to get up, it's all right. Um, but this is the common humanity part. It, when we can say, hey, you know what, actually, yeah, I totally resonate with a little bit of that. Um, and we see that from each other. We see that we're not alone, you know? And we all like to think that we're like incredibly unique, but from the yogic perspective, we, are ultimately all coming from the same source and we all have to go through our our karma like our, our you know actions that need to play out the energy we put into the world has to play out as it needs to play out we all have this that we have to go through and the common humanity is here is that you're not alone um, even if you're in your house physically alone you're not alone and that the whole world is going through a massive, massive change. And although, you know, I say this and you may think, wow, that, I mean, that's great. Like intellectually, you know, one can understand that's true. You know, I'm not alone. There's lots of people going through a lot of difficulties in their own way, emotionally, physically, you know, materialistically, you know, like financially, everything. Um, but emotionally, the impact of what you're going through, what the world is going through, not just on an individual level, but some of you may not realize you also are feeling the impact globally because everything is energy, you know, in this life, like everything is energy. So when you have a mass amount of people, especially, I would say, especially in North America and some, some parts of Europe and, um, you know, through the UK and stuff like that, who are having the media particularly drive intense amounts of fear. And then we're like bringing that in. You are not just feeling your own emotions and all the changes and transitions you're going through, but you're also feeling the collective consciousness. And I hope this would, would bring maybe this insight would bring a little bit of perhaps relief or surrender, the ability to kind of let go a little bit that how you're being impacted or feeling may not, not necessarily be entirely all you. And that's like a big concept to wrap around if that's a really new idea that, you know, what you're feeling every day isn't always just you. And for the empaths in the group, you know this very well who already know that you have, you're highly attuned or sensitive. But for some of us who just, you know, maybe we didn't grow up with that, this is a very new concept, uh, the consideration hasn't been there before, then this can be really helpful to know that the, the intensity of the emotions you're feeling or the intensity of the ups and downs or the maybe feeling trapped or feeling lonely isn't necessarily entirely all yours. And that collectively, so many are feeling this way that this is a, 
very much the the vibe <laughs> you could say vibe going out I have a I have a friend a studio owner who uh, is from Mexico her family's in Mexico and she did go down to see them and she said as soon as you transitioned into Mexico even though Mexico is not doing very well with the situation at hand um, they haven't they're not doing lockdown some of you may know this they're not doing lockdown their their economy is still running and she said the general feeling was totally different it was a totally different vibe you know even though like they're going through a different in that in a different way like we you know in Ontario we have a lockdown and in Mexico they're not doing lockdown they're just they're doing the precautions and they're not doing very great with them but the general you know energy and mental health and emotional health is completely different even though you know technically it's the same or even worse there so wherever you're living can really impact how you're feeling and I just really wanted to start it, start, excuse me, these classes, A, telling you that you're not alone and that this will pass. And that ultimately this is a, a beautiful space for interconnection. It's very difficult because emotions are very big. The difficulties are very real. You know, they're tangible. I'm not saying that they aren't, uh, but it is an opportunity for us to really do this check-in of like, wow, you know, I'm feeling all these things. I can't do all the things that I normally like to do that creates a fulfillment. And it's leaving this sense of emptiness or anger or loneliness. It's this space inside. And as you go through a process of, of learning about yoga or raising your consciousness or doing meditation, is that you start to realize that or see that in society, we're pulling a lot from the outside to the inside. You know, my self-worth outside to the inside. Um, you know, my feeling successful from the outside to the inside. You know, uh, my worthiness from the outside to the inside. So when this cycle, which is more of a cycle for the ego, was broken with COVID, with needing to break all of our typical scheduling and habits and everything there is this like sense of like oh my like what do I do I'm lost I'm depressed I'm angry all of these kinds of emotions flutter to the surface and ultimately whatever you're experiencing now has always really in some way been with you but we just weren't really aware we didn't we weren't really mindful or attentive enough to be in ourselves to see what was going on so as you move through these classes of meditation, the tools I'm giving you is not necessarily to try and remove how you're feeling because we have to, everything that we're experiencing, even in our emotions is energy and it can't just be removed. <laughs> it has to be, you know, transmuted, transformed, transferred, you know, it has to be, it has to change, it has to, to, to grow into something different. And this gives us the opportunity to become uh, more comfortable with our inner selves. It gives us the opportunity to source our sense of strength, self-worthiness, self-love, um, security from the inside. And this is, this is the power of being with ourselves is that as human beings, is connection super important? Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you're not a yogi living in a cave where your like whole devotion of your life is to, you know, break that that last barrier of highest consciousness and become realized where ego completely dissolves and you completely move into a unity of literally the cosmos, literally everything. You see everything a point of unity that nothing is separate and everything is the same. Of course. <laughs> as a human being connection is important but where is that and why are you are you cultivating that connection right is it coming from a place of genuine authenticity and vulnerability and deep love or is it coming from a place of guilt lack shame um, uh, insecurity so on 
So these are some of the things that we're going to work through. And when I was talking about like the resiliency of the soul, it's not just surviving, where surviving is still grasping everything from the outside to try and fill this how we're feeling, to fix how we're feeling, to distract from how we're, how we're feeling mentally, emotionally, physically. You know, the resiliency of the soul is to connect to the, to the strength within where perseverance has uh, like a hand in hand with gentleness and compassion. It's a different kind of strength. And I've seen, and I've also personally experienced that kind of strength that is survival. It's intense. It's rough around the edges. I would say it's fast, like more fast paced, harder to stay still or calm or feel settled for more than a moment. I've seen it in my family, you know, and those who just do, like work nonstop because there's an ability to connect within that grasping from the outside. So this is what I hope will offer you as we move forward is this resiliency, this, this strength and perseverance with compassion and gentleness that allows you to move with grace through what some of you have described as like absolute chaos around you. Like, how do you stay calm and chaos around you? Right? And if you, have, if you did resonate with the loneliness aspect or feeling alone or, or separated, this will slowly um, transform into feeling settled and comfortable with yourself, no matter the ebb and flow outside. Does anyone have any uh, questions about that? I, I'm trying to make sure I save some genuine time for, for questions, or if it's unrelated, that's fine. I think someone just wrote a note here, so I'm just going to read it real quick. So Cindy was just mentioning the, the connection of not getting caught up in others' fears. Uh, and often we learn that kind of pattern uh, from our parents, from our culture. Uh, and sometimes just from the people we hang out with or uh, from trauma. You know, getting caught in others' fears in a way is, is the, it's, the, it's the fight and flight response. It's, oh, like others are afraid. You feel that energy. You need to protect yourself. So you take that on and you start, you know, projecting in that way of like moving from fear-based actions in your life versus, you know, love. Uh, and as an example of that, just to be COVID really, I'm sure you guys are so sick of hearing about COVID, but I'll make it really gentle. Um, you know, I, if I go, you know, into Ubud, example, for example, which is the town here, tons of expats aren't wearing masks. They're not, some of them don't even believe it's real. Um, the locals are okay. They're, they're like, I'd say they're 80, 20, 80% 80 taking it seriously, wearing masks, 20%. Yeah. Some of it's just education, you know, they're just not educated. Um, so the, the sense of safety I feel here versus actually technically in Ontario, because it's so strict, it's a lot more strict Ontario, is very different. However, I don't allow fear of the what ifs to, you know, run my life. I, I'm still going to go into town or so that's accessible for us. Um, but I'm going to do some self-care loving practices that I know makes me feel really safe and secure. And I'm moving from a place of love, not from a place of fear. So when I sit down and, you know, the waitress brings me my water or my coffee, you know, first thing I do when I sit down is like I wipe down my chair, I wipe down the table and I wipe down my cups but I'm not doing it from a sense of like, oh my God, what if she has, or had common contact? Did she wash her hands? So she probably didn't, you know, I shouldn't, maybe I shouldn't even touch, you know, like I'm moving from a place of like these actions in my mind, I'm saying these actions I'm doing for myself is from a place of self-love, of self-care. And even if other people are like, oh my God, she's like crazy. She's like, you know, over the top with this because there's lots of expats here that don't wear masks or don't believe it and that like I can feel their energy looking at me like oh she's like drunk drank the kool-aid I don't care you know love to them for doing what they think they need to do for themselves 
because I can't control other people's actions, but I'm going to do what I know makes me feel best. And I'm going to do it from a place of this is an, ex if there's a level of acceptance of this is where I am, this is where the world is. And there's a level of surrender that I'm making a choice to go out. I'm doing all the things that I feel are best for me. And there's a, a point, there's even a place of surrender in myself that, you know, by some chance I get it. Like, because I believe in karma and all these other things, uh, like these behind the curtain things going on, I have a lot of faith that even if something does happen that, you know, it'll be fine. So it's, it's all about your perception as well. And how do we change your perception? We move from a place of fear and we connect to that inner space of love, compassion and surrender. And it's a, a letting go that we ultimately don't really have a lot of control when it comes to like cosmic, uh, rules or cosmic energy uh like the really big stuff that's going on in the background that we can't physically see some of us if we're empathic or have some of those more um medium-like abilities might be able to sense you know there's so much going on in in the background that there's a for me there's actually a level of surrender already that as things come and go through life i only have so much control which is my free will and meditation, what we're going to be doing these next few weeks is just to allow yourself to connect to that space within you, the space that is unified in love, that is unified in uh, an, like a place of surrender. It's unified in a place of um, not sweating the small stuff, because as my mother used to say, it's all small stuff in terms of like the cosmic <laughs> viewpoint. Um, yeah. So let's just see what Neil says. Neil has asked, what is the role of prana against the collective energy of fear going around? We are cultivating prana when we meditate, right? So yeah. So for those of you that know what prana, the word, prana is like an exchangeable word with energy like the energy that allows us to breathe, for ourselves to regenerate, um, for us to, to move and think and have clarity, those sorts of things. That's prana. Prana stabilized in the body uh, comes from meditating or doing yoga. It stabilizes it. And then therefore we feel more grounded, clear, connected, and more in connection with love and less with fear. So, so the role of prana, okay, is that prana has a very specific vibration of what's called sattvic energy. It's a very calm, harmonious, divine, balanced energy. So when we meditate, not only are we cultivating more stabilized prana within ourselves, so we're stabilizing our energy through, say, pranayama breath work, through the act of surrender by staying in our meditative seat for a period of time, even though some days it's like the last thing we want to do. We create this inner fire that starts to burn away impurities by choosing to you know, stay in our meditative state. And that cultivates a coherency in our electromagnetic field. So we all have an electromagnetic field around us. It's actually quite large. This is how you can walk into a room and automatically know the sense of the room without knowing why. Because your heart creates a field that's 60 times stronger than the brain's electromagnetic field. Think about that. <laughs> And then they, they communicate. So when you're cultivating prana, you're, you're creating coherency in the wavelength of the electromagnetic field. And there's been, you can look up the studies. There's been studies done for like gratitude, for example. Um, if we're deeply in gratitude, it's actually the most coherent, coherent highest level um, vibration in terms of our electromagnetic field. So when you meditate or do yoga and you're really focused and you're really stable on that inward turn, then we create this coherency. And what does that coherency do? It also protects you from a low vibration. So when you're reinforcing um, this connection with yourself in, internally, you're changing your physiology. You're changing how your nervous system responds. Because think of it this way. It's like when you're sitting in meditation, you're going to have some moments where your nervous system spikes because an emotion comes up, your knee hurts, all of a sudden you get a spike of pain in your back, whatever it may be. And when you choose to stay and let it pass or let it process, you're training your nervous system to not be in reactivity. You're literally cultivating mindfulness 
to choose how you wish to respond to the world, even though you're doing it quite, in a way, quite passively with the tools I'll give you. It's very passively done, but it's being done in the subconscious and unconscious mind. So as you cultivate this coherency, you, you raise your own level of vibration and coherency. So when you interact with the world or with people who are not there, you can stay anchored within yourself because you're connected to a source within you that is um, endless and unchangeable and is, is like a well of love, which is our true nature ultimately. Like the nature of the self is, is love. Some people have said this when they've done like major DMT trips where there's this like deep connection to this higher place. I've had a few conversations with a few people. I personally haven't, you know, I just, it's not for me. The drugs aren't for me. Um, but they have been used as tools in that way where people have connected to that in, intense level of love. And I've also heard comments of them say, how could I have forgotten how could I have forgotten that this is my true nature? How could I forget something so profound? So we connect, it's like this link and our breath can be that doorway to that link. And when we're in that, that state, the outside world doesn't, doesn't wait, make us waver. And the more consistently we do that, because it's has to, it's a practice, right? It's if you did it one day, you might feel really good that day, but the next day you got to do it again because you got to reinforce it, right? We got to until it becomes our state of being. So I hope that that answers your your question, uh, Neil. Uh, secondly, that energy you're cultivating, that sattvic energy, going back to that harmonious energy, you're also putting that, you're projecting that into the world. So, you're, so when you have a lot of people meditating, a lot of people doing that, they're collectively changing the vibration of the world. So Amma, my teacher in India, does these massive ceremonies. There's one coming up. There'll be 500 Vedic priests doing mantra, chanting, meditating for like, I think it's, it's a 12, 12 days straight. <laughs> that is powerful. That changes the um, karma of the world that helps the world. Okay. If you have any more questions, you can always ask me at the end. Usually I'll stay on five more minutes. We're going to go into meditation. So if you need just a moment to like undo your legs and give a little stretch, you know, you can do that before we get into it. And it's very important that you are as comfortable as you could possibly be at the beginning of your meditation, because as my teacher says, as much as we can <laughs> do our best uh, to be as comfortable as we can be, the body is mortal and we are never going to be completely comfortable. <laughs> Eventually, we hope that's what happens, right? But um, yogis, the really serious ones, they, they move beyond the body so quickly into the higher states that they don't even feel the body after um, sometimes a few moments. But for us, <laughs> who are not those yogis, you know, you put blankets under your knees, you have a wall behind you, you have a bum propped. And if we need to change positions with our legs, just do your best to keep your eyes closed. Okay. So your palms can face up or down on your thighs. I'm just going to put on my malas. You guys settle in there. You can have your index finger and thumb connected. This is the yana mudra. Uh, when we connect certain points in the fingers that connects energy lines within the body. So you're welcome to do that if you wish. Sitting up nice and tall without any strain in the body. And allow the chin to be somewhat neutral, jaw relaxed. <clears throat> You can close your eyes or close them halfway, looking at the bridge of your nose and take three deep breaths. Allow the tongue to soften from the roof of our mouths. If there's any clenching in the teeth or the jaw, we can also consciously soften there too. Shoulders relax down from our ears and the middle of the body lengthens up as we feel our deep connection to our seat or the earth. We already notice some sensation 
energetically, physically within the body. You can stay aware of that, but let's mainly focus on the feeling of the breath moving in and out of your nostrils to your belly and ribs. With our drishti, our inner point of focus to the heart center, front of the chest. You're welcome to do three ohms with me, either just silently in your own mind, or you can do them out loud for yourself. Uh, it's up to you. Just for those of you that may not have heard an ohm before, I'm going to do it with you. Taking a deep breath in. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh. Taking a moment to allow that to resonate through the body. Softening the space between the eyebrows. And taking one more deep breath in. Not going to bring in a sankopa. This is a prayer or intention. So it could be connected to anything of uh, affirmation of nature, or if you do uh, resonate with a particular religion, you could certainly align that here. Usually I'll say something like, may I know my true nature? May I move from a place of fear to love? No unconditional love, compassion, humility, generosity, grace. Once you've had a few moments to repeat that in your mind's eye, your affirmation or your prayer, at the end of the prayer we say, may all beings be happy and free. You're starting to feel, once again, the breath moving in and out of your nostrils with the attention on the edge of your nostrils and your top lip to experience the brush of air moving in and out of the nose. If our nose is a bit stuffed up today, we could certainly use the breathing through the mouth. The, the nose is a little bit better if we can do that. So you continue to feel the brush of air moving in and out of the nostrils. You may be able to layer your awareness with the sensation of cool as it enters and warm as it exits the nose. Let's just do a few rounds of this silently to ourselves. Letting go if we're thinking we're doing it right or doing it wrong. We just simply do our best, feeling the cool as it enters, warmth as it exits, and the sensation around the nostrils and the top. If you get distracted while practicing this, 
It's just a gentleness, a gentle hand that brings your attention back in. And we just restart our awareness on the cool and the warmth of the breath. Let's shift our attention now to the sensation of the heart center, sacred space of the heart, front of the chest. Feeling the rise and the fall of the breath in the body. You may notice a sensation of your clothing on this area as your breath rises and falls. Notice the warmth or cooling sensation around the skin on the front of the heart. As you feel the clothing or the temperature sensation, as your breath rises and falls, can you feel the pulse of the blood through your veins, the heartbeat in that space as well? I know if this is very difficult to sense that just by bringing our attention and trying to do it, starts to build the pathways to stronger connection. So we just do our best. The next few moments, feeling the sacred space of the heart, front of the chest, as the heart beats, putting vibration to the whole body, as the chest rises and falls. Offering a sliver of surrender. If the heart feels any particular emotion that's becoming quite prominent, we just draw our awareness back. It's a feeling of the beating heart and the rise and the fall of the chest. If our attention gets pulled away, knowing that you are safe, that there is nothing more you need to be or do in this moment, that you are beyond these external things, that you yourself are endless, unchangeable and everlasting. keeping this inner gaze to the space of the heart as you've just cultivated. Count the length of your next exhale to see how long it takes to expel all the air from your lungs. Once you have that number, 
please attempt to make your inhale the same length as your exhale. Balancing both sides of the breath and keeping your attention to the sacred space of the heart. So if your exhale was say five beats long, you would attempt to make your inhale five beats in. Staying as attentive on the feeling of the breath rising and falling at the heart center and the counting of your breath. As the mind will try its best to distract, fantasize, imagine, bring memories or pull you away. The moment that you realize you've become distracted, it's a gentleness that brings you back into the practice of counting your breath and aligning your inner gaze to the heart space. This may happen many times. Jaws relaxed, shoulders are soft, breath is deep. See, we can smooth out the transition between the in-breath and the out-breath, the out-breath and the in-breath. Softening any strain by surrendering. If there's anything you're kind of fighting or holding on to, we soften into this moment, continuing to balance the breath. Inhale, matching the length of our exhale and constantly returning our attention back to the sacred space of the heart in front of the chest.
Be melting into this moment. Each moment we're completely present with the counting of our breath. And letting go of all else. Allow our breath to become natural once more, letting go of the counting. But still our inner gaze, our drishti to the sacred space of the heart, in front of the chest. Watching and observing, not like the ebb and flow of our own mind, but attached to none. If you become attached, return the main focus of the mind to the heart space and the simple watching of the rise and fall of your natural breath. As we bring our attention into the sacred space of the heart, once again, feel the pulse of your heartbeat vibrating not through the chest only, but also through the whole body. Noticing the temperature of the body around the heart space, the skin might be cool or hot or neutral. And bring attention to clothing or the jewelry or anything that is physically touching that space. You may notice it when the heart rises and falls. Bringing that hands to heart center, maintaining eyes closed or half closed, depending on what you chose at the beginning. Palms connect. Noticing the sensation of the fingerprints, thumb pads connecting to each other and the sensation and vibration in between the palms. I'll do three ohms in the mind's eye or uh, with me if you wish out loud. It's up to you. Ohms very powerful part of the practice. Taking a deep breath in.
next one. I'll complete our practice with some closing mantras. You don't need to know these, but if you do, you could certainly repeat them with me. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is a little scratchy today. <laughs> oh, Asatoma Sajgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityoma Hambritam Gamaya, Loka Samasa Sukino Pavantu, Loka Samasta Sukino Pavantu, Loka samasta sukino pavantu. Om shanti shanti shanti. Om shri karibyo namaha hare om. If you wish, you can take a small bow at the head or a full bow towards the floor and this is an acknowledgement to your highest self your truest nature as well as any teachers or people who have led you on this path it's a very generous uh, acknowledgement you know to that wisdom 